<laughs> For this video, we revisit a concept first brought to us from Jeff at Telf Later Mouse, the 8 cent penny slug. Naturally, we'll be modifying the design slightly by adding a concrete nail as a penetrating point and more pennies for weight to see if the slug remains self-stabilizing and to see if it helps or hurts the original design. We have our eight penny slug and we went ahead and added a concrete nail inside of that. And that's seven eighths of an ounce. We decided to go ahead and make one a little bit closer to a one ounce. This is actually one in an eighth ounce. And somewhere in here I'll show you or break to it what they actually look like, how they are made, what recipe we use to get these. But today we're going to go ahead and shoot multiple objects, everything from a crystal skull to an AR500 level 3 plate. So stay tuned, let's see what we could do. Also, new merch is finally available. We have our bolt action satisfaction with our ballistic bandit shirt please take a look we also have clint here in the ar guys a semi satisfaction with the same ballistic bandit in the back definitely take a look at the website helps out the channel we truly appreciate it we also have some we also have some stickers some lever action satisfaction bolt action satisfaction uh different sizes again anything to help out the channel we truly appreciate on to the testing i'm sorry this is a seven seven eighths ounce with a 30 grain long shot load we'll try to get a velocity we're going to go for the x on the aluminum plate and we're about 15 yards you good yes sir here we go Ooh. velocity 1000 94 For our first shot we started with a light load of 29 grains of long shot hoping for good stability and accuracy and to our surprise the stability the self stabilizing slug was was uh, very stable and pretty darn accurate uh, only surprise was that the penetrating tip stayed with the penny and did not disengage. Okay, so we had this at quite an angle, I would say at least 30 degree angle. And you could see where the nail hit this really close to the X that we were trying to get. Uh, so it, as you'll see in the slow motion, it flew straight, it flew true. Um, unfortunately, not enough power. It did give us a little bit of a bulge in the back. This is, I believe, 5 8 uh, T6061 aluminum. So this is some strong stuff here. But let's get a, a larger load and see, uh, see if going faster with a little bit more weight can do it. One and an eighth ounce with 38 grains of long shot. Let's see, we were... We were hoping closer to 1,400 feet per second, but, uh, you know, we're going to see what we get on this. We'll go a little under the other one. You good? Yep. Here we go. Okay. There we go. 1,466. So unfortunately we lost the slow motion footage on this one, but it did end up hitting the plate sideways. This one with a little bit more power started to yaw and didn't correct itself. That way it didn't hit the penetrating tip forward, but it smacked into this aluminum enough to crack it on this backside. And I mean, this is a, that's a beefy plate. But either way, we're going to continue on with some of the testing. On to the next, uh, next target. Okay, now we got a JB Weld. One and an eighth ounce. And we're going to see if this can uh, fly straight. And we got a soft target up there, just some two gallons of water. Oh, 
<laughs> now, what's interesting to me on this shot is that this is our lightest load in the one and eighth ounce. We had good stability and we are only using 36 grains of long shot. My assumption is that we are around 13 to 1350 feet per second, but the stability was good. And as we continue on, you can see anytime we push beyond 1400 feet per second, we tend to get some instability. Okay, so we now went down to the seven eighth ounce 30 grain. Uh, we're only doing one gallon of water and I put a one inch thick piece of HDPE behind it. We're going to see if we can catch this one. And we'll get a velocity on this one as well. Much better velocity. That is 1,153 feet per second. Once again, we have good stability and accuracy is just a little to the right. But what is super surprising about this one is we get to see in the slow-mo after we hit, after we go through the gallon of water, hit the HDPE, that slug is still together. It has not fallen apart and it just shows the strength of what these things can take. Okay, so you saw the water go boom and this thing again even through a one gallon jug penetrated pretty good but uh, that little penetrating tip just didn't didn't uh, come out and it stayed together as you saw in the slow-mo and we spent a good time looking for it we could not find it but we'll go on to the crystal skulls and hopefully we can we can get one of those Okay, so this one's gonna be a fun one. We will go ahead and have our Aquaman, or I don't know what you would wanna call this, but this is our synthetic ballistic gel that we made from scratch with a crystal skull inside of it. Um, on hot days like this, we don't have to worry about it uh, melting or doing anything like that. But we put one of our big JB Weld slugs in here and we're going to see if we can't hit that right in the nose. Oh, 1531. So this one had 39 grains of long shot and it was just loaded a little too, with too much force. We lost the self stabilizing factor and accuracy. You know, maybe a rifled barrel might help. Okay, so that last shot was 1531. We noticed on the slow-mo, if you're loading them a little too hot, they don't tend to uh, fly straight. And of course, it could be the way you were. These are all custom hand-built, handmade. But we're gonna go ahead and try one of the 7.8s epoxy. So here we go again, 30 grains of long shot, and it is self-stabilizing, very accurate, again, just a little to the right, and a dump of energy. Uh, seven eighths with 30 grains of long shot seems to be right where it's at for the smooth bore. We hit him right there, as you can see, and it looks like, yeah, yeah, we pretty much tore that up. The crazy thing is that nothing came out the back. So something tells me the bullet might still be in here. Give me a second, I'm gonna look around and we'll go from there. So I forgot to take a picture, but we basically found it intact and in the same condition as we shot it, just as you see here. 
so we brought out a fully rifled Mossberg. Um, I'm not sure that this will engage the rifling, so we are a little short of 0 0.735, 0 0.730, the barrel diameter, inner diameter. But either way, we thought we'd give it a shot. We'll go from here. Good. Yep. Okay, here we go. Uh, 1,459. Okay, that is crazy. We went straight through this one. Straight through this one. And through the back of that. And we, we recovered the projectile. And uh, as you see in the slow-mo, we did have a marking in the back and it did engage the rifling and didn't do much uh, damage to the pennies. So we might have to try that on the last few. Okay, so we're gonna give rifling another shot. One and an eighth ounce. This time we have a Tactical Scorpion Gear AR500 Level 3 plate. From what we've seen, it's very, very unlikely this will go through. But we brought it to test, so here we go. You ready? Good? Good. Okay, here we go. No reading on the chronograph, but we know we hit it. So a completely different result using a rifled barrel. As you can see, this one is self-stabilized, steady in flight, and again hitting just right of where we are aiming on the target. As you can see, that little penetrating tip didn't do almost anything to this plate. Uh, back side of it, uh, yeah. Nothing really. I'm guessing it was going about 1400 feet per second. I will check on the slow-mo. I haven't seen it yet, but we'll see if it was even flying straight. So unfortunately we started running into some video problems and couldn't quite get the last bit of this, but we decided to go ahead and take this last one and an eighth ounce slug out to about 35 yards and see if we could still get that accuracy. And as you can see, finally, this one has a line in the back. The rifling has been engaged, and that target's only about three inches wide. And we were able to, again, hit just to the right. So we had consistency again. And of course, lastly, we have the gel block. Now, this was a 7 8 ounce penny slug that we had found and decided to go ahead and just hit the gel block with it and despite it being a penetrating slug it dumped quite a bit of energy so my final thoughts on these penny slugs i have to say i was amazed and shocked i basically had one dollar into these slugs yes there's only eight to twelve pennies so eight to twelve cents but including the powder the hulls the the wads whatever i might may have used it was about one dollar each and considering that most winchester federal slugs right now uh, the least expensive you can probably find is right around two dollars a slug so it's cost effective i would like to do a little bit more practical accuracy out to 50 yards and see if they're viable uh, maybe even hunting type loads the penetrator might be good for hog or some some sort of uh, hunting like that but you know it requires a little bit more hunting penetrating it, you know we we have another slug we're going to be testing here in the next month or so that has a different uh, penetrating tip so stay tuned for that 
but these I, I was impressed with you know they, they did quite a bit I don't know that the concrete nail added any more than just the pennies did by themselves um, but you know again it probably requires more testing we are going to refine the design that we did and with the pennies and we're going to compare them to our other penetrating uh, slug that we're coming up with that that slug has tungsten and hdpe it's a it's quite a bit more custom we're actually using milk jugs for the hdpe and such so that's going to be exciting Stay tuned for that one. Don't forget, we this is the 357 Lever Action Satisfaction shirt. We saw merch. I appreciate it if you guys are still here till the end, you know, and until the next one.